Adam Lavelle, the wrestling snob from WrestlingDoneRight.com. Go there. Go to WrestlingDoneRight.com to check out my links to my Facebook, to my YouTube, to my Twitter, and follow me for everything Wrestling Done Right, which is another term for the World Wrestling Entertainment Company. Check it out. Let's talk about SmackDown from April 26, 2024, Friday night, of course. It was the WWE Draft of 2024. I've got a separate video giving you my thoughts on the draft picks. Check that video out. This is about the first segment of that show, the first portion of that show. And it was none other than Paul Heyman, the wise man, the counsel for the bloodline. And he's here to tell us that it's not a rumor that Roman Reigns has withdrawn from the draft. It is the truth. And it is a good thing because now Roman Reigns will remain on SmackDown where he became a star, where he made the championship as worthy as it is, where he became the most known, most famous, most over professional wrestler in the world, according to Paul Heyman. And that seems obvious, true to me when you look at it. Now, let me give you my thoughts real quick on this. Okay, Heyman said he would be intrigued with the number one and the number two picks because they would set the tone for the future of this company. And when Roman returns... That just might mean something as well. So Roman Reigns, first of all, this tells us Roman Reigns has the authority or because of Paul Heyman, his wise counsel, his wise man counsel, he has managed to finagle his way into not being in the draft, not being selectable. How? I don't know. I mean, he's not returning for, for some time. We don't know when, but that's going to be a big surprise when it happens. Brilliant idea, Triple H, PLE, in this Paul Levesque era. Uh, brilliant idea. You know, so he is ineligible. The Bloodline, they're clearly drafting groups this year, as you'll see in my draft video. So, Tomatonga and Solo Sioka can be chosen as a group and will be in the draft later, of course. But not high. Why were they not drafted high? Because nobody wants them officially. They want them for the ratings and for the importance and for what have you, but they don't want them for the trouble, for the annoyance. I mean, my God, Tama Tonga is smashing his rental car into Kevin Owens' rental car, injuring him, causing him to bleed out of the side of his head. So, of course, Nick Aldis is like, oh, I don't need this. You know, we settle things in the ring, but at the same time, people watch the show to see these guys, so I want them on my show, so they get drafted like, what was it, 11th or 12th, Solo and Tomatonga. Way down. I'm not talking, you know, 20th or 30th, but the, out of the top 10 of drafts, what does that tell you? It tells you what the audience is chanting, we want Roman. And that's what they want. But wait a minute, the bloodline are heels, right? They're bad guys. So why is the audience chanting for Roman? Well, this is clearly setting up what's going to happen. When Roman returns, he's going to be fighting the bloodline. Well, but isn't he the head of the table? Isn't he the tribal chief? Yes, but are, they're very likely going to be fighting over the bloodline. Who is the bloodline? Who's in charge of the bloodline? Who is the head of the table? Who is the tribal chief? This stuff's already been going on for, what, two, three years? It's going to go on for another 10 because it's intriguing, because it's interesting, and because the fans love to see it. This is a mystery. We don't know what's going on. I have a video out there giving you my opinion that The Rock is behind it all. The Rock is behind Solo in Tamatanga. The Rock wants to take the seat at the head of the table because Roman let the family down by losing the title to Cody Rhodes, another, you know, royal family in professional wrestling, and he's not happy about that. And I, there's no proof of this. It's just what I think. It may not be true. It's just what I think. And I think it makes an intriguing story. And when Roman comes back, if he's going to feud with these guys, who is Paul Heyman going to be with? I don't know. I have a little bit of a theory only because I don't see Paul Heyman as a babyface, as a good guy. I don't see him sticking with Roman if this happens. But this just little subtle minute interview, minute or two, where Heyman's telling us about how Roman Reigns is withdrawn from the draft and talks about the first two picks being intriguing. He's hinting at the fact if you aren't going to pick the current bloodline in your first two picks, how relevant are they without Roman Reigns, right? That's basically what he's saying. He's predicting it without saying that. You have to read between the lines. And that's what made this good. That's what kicked off this show great. And that's why, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, the WWE, WWE is the thinking wrestling fans company because they want you to think, they want us to talk like this, they want us to debate, they want us to put out theories and ideas because that's what makes wrestling hot. 
The fans talking about theories and ideas and, and fantasy booking is hotter than fans talking about five, six, seven star matches. And that's just the truth. Wait and see. You don't even have to wait and see. Look what's happening now. Watch how it continues to dominate in the future. Because not only are WWE doing angles and stories and gimmicks right, they're doing the wrestling right now too. What a time. I can't believe it.